Welcome to lecture 54, Get and Set Methods. So in the last couple of lectures, we started talking about why we make our data that is inside of our class private. So right now in our student class, we have name, age, and final grade, and they're all marked private. So I want to continue talking about that. And then I also want to talk about this concept of get and set methods. And that will lead to the next lecture, which is on properties, which is basically the same thing as get and set methods, except properties are C sharp specific, whereas get and set methods are can be used in any programming language, but the same concept works for both. So let's start talking about why we want to make our data in our class private. I mentioned to you before that our class should be a self-containing object. Anything that that deals with students should be all inside and wrapped around this class. And anytime we need to do something, we just call functions and things like that on the class to get the job done. We don't ever want our class to be able to get broken at all. We don't want to, there to be any chance that whoever's using the class can mess it up by putting in wrong data or anything like that. You, you want to build a solid class where it works perfectly and there's no there's no bugs in it where a user can break it on their own. So by making data private, that allows us to protect our class. For example, every student has a name, age, and final grade. But once the user set the name, age, and final grade, we really don't want anyone to have access to, to just change the name or age. Once the student's name is set, it probably should not change, and the age will change over time. So the first way that we started controlling this is by making them private. And when you when you actually set the data, you'll set that in the constructor. And the constructor only gets called one time in the beginning of when that instance is being created. The constructor will be called once, and it will take in the information that you supplied it. And at that moment, the name, age, and final grade will be set. As of right now, after that, there's no way to change the name, age, and final, name, age, and final grade. So the get and set functions in this lecture are designed to expose a way to the users that they can access the name, age, and final grade or change it in a controlled way. And that part where I say in a controlled way is very important because if I wanted to give people access to the name, age, and final grade, I could just make these public. By making them public, now anyone could go and change the name from the program. So if I go in here now and say s1 dot, we can see name shows up and I have direct access to the variable. I can change and manipulate it any way I want. I could do something like this, name equals nothing. Now, do you think that that's what our, we want to happen in our program, that someone can come and change the student's name to nothing? No, a student needs a name. That's why I put it into the constructor. That's why giving a user direct access to your internal data, like a name, is not good because then it gives them complete control over everything. They can completely mess up your student. Having no name breaks our program, basically. So, so far, we make it private. By making it private, if I try to go S1 dot, name does not show up anymore. So we're protected. No one has direct access to the name, so they can't mess up our program and set their name to nothing. However, what if we want the user to be able to get the name? So like they, they want to just see who this is, like maybe S1, and they want to like console that right or console that right line their name. Right now, there's no way to do that because there's no access to the name. Or what about their age? What if they want to print how old the student is? They don't. They can't do that because there's no access to it. Or what if they wanted to change the age? There's no access to that either. There's no ways to manipulate these data because they are private. So the get and set, like I said, is a way that we can expose these variables basically these name age and stuff like that we can expose them to this user but in a controlled way and the way the reason why it's controlled is because we're going to expose them through a function and by doing that we can put code inside of our function that we can protect our data we can use if statements and say if you try to set the name to nothing don't let you do it so by putting it into a function we can put control and constraints on this data where we can't do that if we just make it public so let's start off by doing the name We'll, we'll supply get and set functions for our name. So we'll let the user be able to get the name and change the name, but in a controlled way. For example, let's start off by saying 
Let's do the get function first. So get just means that you are getting the data. So that's just a name that programmers go by. A get function is just a function that you get a variable. So in this case, I'm going to say public is my access modifier because this is the public interface to the name variable. This is what people will use in order to get the name variable. But it, since it's a function, I can run code to protect it. So when we say public, then the return type. The return type is going to be string because I need to give them what they're looking for. They're looking for the name, so I need to return a string, which is the name. So I'll say public string, and I'll call it get name. And there's no parameters in this case because they're just getting the name. They don't need to give me anything. And then the body. So in this case, we're, we're going to do it simple right now. We're just going to give them the name just so you can see how it works. I'm, so I'm just going to do return name. Very simple, return name. So back in main now, if I wanted to print their name, let's, let's go back down to just one student. Let's remove this. Let's say I just wanted to print student one's name. I can go to console.write line s1 dot, and now you see a function called get name. I can do that, and it's a function call, so I put the parentheses in, and I run that, and now we will see that it will say Tom. So we're getting that name, it's printing Tom. However, so far, this is not really controlled at all. This is sort of like just making it public. But let's go over an example of what would be controlled with the get name. For example, let's say you only can get the name if the student is over 18 years old. Then you can get the name. Otherwise, if they're not over 18 years old, then they're a minor, and we're not going to release that information. We're going to pretend that that's what the program is going to do. So by having this get function, that's the control that we can put into this application. So it's a function, so I can add code. So I'm going to say in here, I'm going to say if the age, so if the student's age is greater than or equal to 18, then return his name. Else, if he's not, if he's less than 18, I'm going to say return um, this student is too young to display any information. So now, so as you can see already, if I were to just make this public, they can get the name no matter what. But now I added my first constraint into get name. The only way they can get the name is through this interface. If they want my name, they have to go through get name. And because they have to go through here, I have constraints set up. I said if the user or the student is 18, then I'll give you his name. Otherwise, if he's less than 18, he's too young, I'm not going to give you his name. I hide it. I hide it from you. And that this is the power of data hiding, making this data private. So if I try it now, since Tom is only 15, it's not going to give me his name. It says this student is too young. It's not going to release his name to anyone. However, as soon as I make him, let's say he's 19 years old, now I can get his name. Now it's Tom. So this is how I'm starting to control it. Because you can see if I do S1 dot, there's no way to get this student's name unless I go through get name. Since I have to go through get name, I need to go through the constraints. That's the, this is the major difference that you need to understand of just making your, your, your data public versus making an interface that people have to go through in order to get that data. Because then we can add constraints and protect our data. Okay, so far so good. So we have get name. Let's try set name. So we'll give the, the, the users the ability to change the student's name, even though maybe in the real world we, we may not want to do that. But this is just for learning. So I'm going to do a get function, I mean a set function. So public, now a set function is not going to return anything. It's just it's just updating information in this class. So there's no returning anything. So I'm going to make the return type void. I'm going to call it set name. Now it needs a parameter. It needs the new name. So I'm going to say string name. Whatever the name you're trying to change, or I'll say string new name. Whatever you're trying to change, that's going to be passed into here. So now I have the information of what they're trying to change. Once I have that new name, now I can now I can actually change it. So I can say name up here, or this dot name doesn't matter. I can say this dot name, which represents this class's name, or just name equals new name. Now, if I just do that, the problem still exists, where I can set the user's name to nothing. For example, watch if I do s1 dot set name, I can pass in an empty string, and watch what happens when I run it. That is the user's name now. When I do get name, it's saying nothing. However, I can protect this because it's a set function. It's not, it's not, they don't have direct access to my variable. I'm giving them a function to go through. So because of that, I can add some constraints to try to protect my class. I can say if new name 
is not equal to an empty string, then update the name. That's the only way it will update it. So if if they enter something that's not equal to an empty string, then we'll update their name. So now if you try to run this, watch what happens. The Tom stays. We protected ourselves. You can't put an, an empty name anymore. So we made sure that our program is a little bit more robust and that you can't break it. If I gave them, I'm going to say it again, if I gave them direct access to that variable by making it public, they could make it nothing and I will never know about it. But because of this, I'm protected now because they have to go through this function, this set function. So I'm protecting myself. Okay, now let's go ahead and add the get and sets for um, age. So let's do the get for age first. Public int. So age is an int, so I'm going to return an int. Get age. I want to say return age. Now, in this situation, I could also say if they're a minor, don't display their age. We want to protect our students, so if they're a minor, no one should be able to just have access to their age. So we can once again do that to protect it. We can say if the age is greater than or equal to 18, then return the age. Otherwise, If they're not 18, we can return a number that represents that we're not giving them their real age. Because we're returning an integer, I, I, I should return something. So I'm going to return uh, return negative 1. So negative 1 in this case means that you don't have access to his age. It's restricted. So anytime you're trying to get the age, it will return negative 1 to the user if they don't have access to this age because they're too young. So that's get age. And then let's do set age. Public void set age. And then they have to give us the new age, int new age. I'll say age equals new age. However, they can break this also. Um, for example, they could set the age to zero. Well, someone can't be zero, so I should protect my program and say, no, you can't set the age to zero, so I'm going to add that constraint because it's a set function. I couldn't do that with just a public variable, but with a set function, I could do that. So if I say, if new age is not equal to zero, then set the age, that's the only way. If you set it to zero, we're protected. Now, obviously, I can add more constraints to make my class really robust, but this is just an example just to demonstrate the different things that you can use this for and why we actually make things private. And the last ones we're going to do is let's just make the get and sets for the final grade. So we'll say public double find get final grade. This is where it's going to return final grade. Once again, we could put the age check on here, or we could say if they're if they're failing, don't show the grade, or all different constraints. Does not matter. For now, I'll just leave it as return final grade. That's fine. They can just have the final grade, whatever. But for the set final grade we need to protect that a little bit public void set final grade double new final grade so for the new final grade I need to protect it a little bit so let's start off by saying final grade equals new final grade however we should say we should do some protecting let's say if the user is getting a grade that's less than 65 for their final grade then automatically bump it up to a 65 so that the users never get a grade below 65 to protect themselves. Also, we need a constraint that says if it's greater than 100, bump it down to 100. So you're, the range is only from a 65 to 100 so that our program is protected. So I'm going to say if new final grade is less than 65, then just set new final grade equal to 65. So I'm just going to overwrite it and, and set it to 65. Else if new final grade is greater than 100 then just set the final grade equal to 100 so depending on what it is I just overwrite the value of new final grade whatever is in here if it's less than 65 I overwrite it and store a 65 in it if it's greater than 100 I overwrite it and put 100 and then I update the grade so let's see how this works right now his grade is a 75 toms that is so let's go ahead and say s1 dot set final grade let's try to set him to a 40 let's see what happens and then we'll print out his grade by going console.writeline s1 get 
grade get final grade let's run it and as you can see I set it to a 40 but it went to a 65 so that so our, our little constraint is working also if I try to give him a grade over 100 like 105 no there's no extra credit in this school <laughs> So Tom gets 100 instead. It goes back to 100. So we're protecting our class. It's robust. So that's actually it for this lecture. I just want to emphasize the really the importance of making your data private behind the scenes and exposing get and set public interfaces to those data so that we can control it in the function. Because in the function, we can write code. But inside of a, just a public variable, we can't do anything about it. In the next lecture, we're going to take a look at properties. As I mentioned, properties are a C-sharp specific topic, which basically is the same exact thing as get and set functions. They're just a different way of doing it that C-sharp um, created on their own. Other languages like C++ and Java do not have properties, so you can't use them there. It's only for C-sharp. However, in any language, in C++, Java, C-sharp, any language, Whenever you build a class, you're going to be using get and set functions because there that's universal. You can build get and set functions anywhere. The idea of object-oriented programming always enforces that you should make your data private. So in any OOP language, you're going to be using get and set functions. Obviously, you can call them whatever you want. You don't need to call them get and set functions, but that, that general idea of how they work will be in almost every class you make probably. Like I said, properties are just a C-sharp specific way of doing it. Maybe it's a little bit quicker in certain um, situations, but it's C-sharp specific.